Hi, this is Russell Stannard from TeacherTrainingVideos.com. I'm a big user of Quizlet and I actually use Quizlet at the moment to study Polish. And what I'm going to do now is give you five tips of things that I've been doing and especially tips four and five I think you might find particularly interesting in terms of how we can use Quizlet more effectively with our students. So some tips both for the teacher and for the students. Let's get started straight away. So tip one is don't reinvent the wheel. Click on search. If you're looking for going to make a new set of cards, start by searching to see if another teacher has made those cards. For example, I need to learn Polish prepositions. So I'm going to just do a quick search and see, can I find Polish prepositions? And if I can, then, and it looks like here, for example, I've got a set. I'm going to have a quick look at these ones here and just check them through. And they look okay. And I can check them. No. On four. Pomiędzy. Between. S. With. S. In. On. Ot. Okay, so if I'm happy with these cards, what I can do next is make a copy. So don't just use a set of cards made from another teacher. Make sure that you copy those cards, give them a new name, and then click on create. Now you've got your own set of those cards. So first rule is don't reinvent the wheel. Okay, tip two is don't give out too many cards in one set. One thing I notice a lot, and let's have a look at this one here, it's kind of happened here, is that we've got something like around 20 cards. Students are not going to learn that many prepositions in one go. What I would do here is actually turn these into two sets of cards. So what I'm going to do first of all is click on add or remove terms, and straight away I'm just going to choose the first 10. Um, if I need to make a different set of cards to practice the second 10 words, well, let's do it that way. It's just not a good idea to be giving students huge lists of words to study in one go. Much better to really focus on, say, 10 words and then another day do another 10. Because basically what happens in the end is the students simply forget the words. So now I've simply got here 10 uh, prepositions that I'm going to work with. So once you've copied your cards, remember you can go to the bottom, you can edit the cards, and then you can uh, then obviously click on the done button. In fact, you can edit the cards from the top as well, just to make that point clear. You can click here and edit, or you can always go to the bottom of the page and add and remove cards. So as well as checking the cards to make sure that you're happy with what uh, teachers have written, because obviously some teachers will make mistakes, so make sure that you're happy with the cards. The second thing is don't give out huge numbers of cards to students to study. Tip three is to do with the way you use the cards, particularly the flashcards. So for example, if we click on these cards here, a couple of things that are important. First of all, it's much harder to uh, produce the target language when you're speaking. So for example, in this activity at the moment, all I need to do is read and hear the word in Polish and then think what that word is in English and then move on to the next one. Or in fact, the end there. And the same thing, I got the word in Polish and so I'm actually producing the English word. So I'm saying dziesięć, which is 10, and I'm going to click it over. I'm going to come back to the next one which is 30. So that cognitively is a lot easier than to, for example, go to the options and change it so that we've got the Polish, then answer with Polish. Now, if I answer with Polish, that makes the whole activity a lot more difficult. And another tip here is always click on show advanced audio options because you always want your target language on and the language you're using off in most cases, depending, of course, on what type of cards you've got. So in this particular case now, this activity, if I do it this way around, and let's click on the next card, 10, this is obviously a much more difficult way to uh, do the activity because now I've actually got to say the word in Polish. So make sure that you keep in, in, in mind that cognitively it's much more difficult if you're producing the target language than if you are actually uh, seeing the target language first and then just thinking of the translation into English. 
My next tip is about kind of creative ways of using your study set. So I'm going to give you a couple of examples of things that I've been playing around with that seem to work quite well. This one is where I create cards where you've got both the uh, question and then the answer. Uh, so instead of having obviously a translation, I've actually simply just used them for question and answer. Now it doesn't mean that all these cards will work, but for example if I went to match then that will work perfectly because basically I'm looking for the answer to the question. I've taken these questions from a dialogue that uh, I was uh, watching. So for example, the first question here would be Kiedy yesh snedania? And I would put yem snedania rano. So when do you have breakfast? I have breakfast in the morning. So that could easily be done in English or French or Spanish, etc. So that matching activity work. And the flashcards will also work. So for example, if I click on flashcards, then I've got the question and then I've got to try to remember what the answer is. If I can't remember it, then I can click here and, and watch it and then move on to Kiedy the next one. Spać? Okay, and then the same thing. If I can't remember, I can look. And if I can remember the question, then obviously uh, uh, for example jem śniadania rano yeah so great way of actually just doing a question and answer practice and of course you're producing language and language in context sentences rather than just a word in isolation I've been looking at all different sorts of ways of getting uh, a kind of speaking Polish and practicing my Polish. And this is another tip that I've come up with, to give you three examples here. I have the sentence and then I have the sentence with a gap in it. And so what I do is I try to, first of all, hear the sentence and then I see it a second time, but with some words taken out and try to remember the rest of the sentence. Again, it's a kind of memory activity, but it's trying to use vocabulary in context and it's kind of building up my um, confidence in speaking Polish and practicing. So, for example, if I took these examples, and it's very easy to make these cards because you just write the word out and then copy the word and then delete the first, all the words in the middle and just have the first and the last word. So if I did the flashcards here, just to give you an example. Pijam kawę na śniadanie. So it's, yeah, pijam kawę na śniadanie. So pijam kawę na śniadanie. Then I click here and then I've got to try to remember it. Pijam kawę na śniadanie. PM kawy na śniadanie. And I'm simply just trying to build up my confidence in repeating words, but making it a little bit more cognitive by, for example, taking out all the middle words. Idę rano do pracy. Yeah, idę rano do pracy. Again, so idę rano do pracy. Idę rano do pracy, which means basically I go to work in the morning. Yeah, idę rano do pracy. Etc. Pracuję w prywatnej szkole. Okay, so the our whole idea here is a confidence builder. It's obviously a sort of type of repetition, but it's slightly more cognitive. And it's all about really saying sentences and practicing sentences rather than just words in isolation. I really hope you found those videos useful. Please come to teachertrainingvideos.com and if you want to, you can sign up to the newsletter, keep up to date with the latest videos, any short courses I'm running or special offers on software. If you're not interested in the newsletter, then click here and there are some great sections here of all content that is free for learning how to use technology in our teaching and learning. One section you might be particularly interested in is the Quizlet one and you can just click there. But other very popular sections are Russell's five minute blog and the online business if you're looking to, for example, deliver uh, classes online. And just finally, if you go uh, to the YouTube channel, you will find that there are actually more videos there than you will find on the website. So if you really want to follow my work, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Everything's free and I really hope you find it useful.